Couples who have an NSFW How We Met story. How did you meet? Story 1. My parents lied to me for years. They told me they met while they were in college. As it turns out, my father was in the Navy. Stationed on the West Coast. My mother lived in Washington, D.C. My father was casually banging my mum's roommate. Dad comes back to see family in Connecticut. Takes a ride down to D.C. to see his lady friend. As it turns out, lady friend found someone else and passed my dad off to my mum. Dad gets there. Everyone is in a jolly mood. They start partying. But it doesn't stop for two weeks. They claim. It was the 70s. We were just having a good time. Ten days into this party, my mum ended up passing out on a commuter train when she finally had to go back to work. Dad came to pick her up, and they went back to the party. Eventually, my father goes back to the West Coast. My mum comes to visit a few months later. He proposes as my mum gets off the plane. Now I know what you're thinking. OP, you came along a few months later. Nope, three years later. They'll be celebrating 38 years together next April. So can anyone confirm if the 70s were as much fun as everyone says? Story 2. I was dragged out of the house by my buddy to meet up with some girl he liked, and her friends. I really didn't want to go, but he kept telling me that it was going to be awkward if he was the only guy there in a group of girls. I went along, we got to the bar, I introduced myself to the group of girls, but one of them didn't say anything or stand up. She just sat there on this swing. It was an outdoor bar with bench swings. So I immediately thought, that girl's a bitch. I end up drinking alone and drunkenly stumbling around the bar until I end up back at that swing. Lo and behold, this girl is still sitting there, this time alone. I decide to go see why she has a stick up her ass and plop down next to her on the swing. I then lean over and say, Hi, my name is X. We didn't get to meet earlier. In a sarcastic tone. She looks over and mouths something to me. I yell, What? To which she mouths the same thing again. So drunk me yells, We're in a bar, you have to talk louder. Then the music cuts out for a second. She leans in and says, I can't talk very loud, I had surgery on my throat for my cancer. And the only thing I could think to say back was, Oh, I thought you were just being a bitch. Do you want a drink? Later that night, I asked for her number in a Taco Bell. She gave me the wrong number. I ended up seeing her out again a couple weeks later, sober, and slowly started to win her over. Five years later, we are married. Story three. Was out for my birthday one night. Obviously, I wanted to get my end away, so I went to find a co-worker who I knew I could get it on with. We had done it a few times before. Instead, she introduced me to her friend who almost immediately rammed her tongue down my throat. Not long after that, she dragged me to the girl's toilet, gave me head. Then I bent her over the toilet before being kicked out of the club. I walked her home because I'm a gentleman. Then we continued in the back of her car. Nine and a half years later, we're engaged and have a two-year-old son. Also, she hates that story. I wonder what they tell their parents or people who inevitably ask. So how did you two first meet? Story four. My now wife and I met seven years ago on OK Cupid. That part we tell people. The part we generally leave out, at least with family and co-workers, is that our oh-so-romantic first date was just a bang meet-up arranged after less than ten messages to each other. Nothing more and nothing less. I went to her apartment. We were making out five minutes later. I saw her chest for the first time five minutes after that and we had done it for the first time ten minutes after that. We didn't even exchange last names. After several more similar meet-ups, we went on our first date to a restaurant a couple of weeks later, and actually had a conversation about our lives, and jobs and thoughts and stuff. Then I started hanging around her apartment more and more after, walking her dog sometimes. We started watching a couple TV shows together. We started going to more dinner and movie dates together. About maybe five weeks after first meeting... She asked me straight up if we were now boyfriend and girlfriend, and I was like, yeah, I guess so. Then came the first I love yous and meeting her parents, and being there for each other in times of stress, and moving in together and getting a new place together, and sharing finances, and getting a cat together, and getting married, and building a life, etc, etc. Now we're just a happy but standard, boring suburban couple, who no one would ever assume anything kinky about. But yep... The span of time where I had met my wife but not yet seen her boobs was about 500 to 600 seconds. 
I'm sure this is much more common than people realise these days. Dating is different. Story 5. I met my now wife at a party at someone's house in the country where there were several hundred people in attendance, two months before graduation. There were kegs aplenty. My best friend was in the band, and he took my request when I saw someone I wanted to dance with. We took things outside and walked into an unfenced field, both pretty drunk. We slipped on a grassy hillside and fell down together. Pants came off in no time. She had a very unusual last name, and I spent half the remaining night in a drunken haze trying to remember what it was, and the other half trying to find it in a phone book. Oh, by the way, the graduation was high school graduation. She was my high school sweetheart. That was almost 43 years ago. Does this count as being high school sweethearts? That's not the image that comes to mind for me. Story 6. My lady and I had the same group of friends, but her and I barely knew each other. One night her friend and us got drunk, and her friend suggested that if I were to go get her cigarettes and get condoms, we could all bang. I asked if she was down and got a nod, probably the fastest I have ever walked to a gas station in my life. I got back and they held up their end of the bargain, until a roommate yelled that we were being too loud and we had to stop. The girl, who is now my girlfriend, asked if we should go finish up at her place. The friend who originally had the idea said she was going to pass out, so she stayed. But I said I was game. We went back to her house and banged for the rest of the weekend. Now we've been together for about two years, and happily living together for about a year. We're planning on moving out of state together, and kind of settling down if we're still happy and doing well here for another year or so. Tam, roommate is such a downer. Let man live his fantasy for one night. Story 7. We met on OkCupid, and neither of us were looking for anything serious, but he had a lot of experience with BDSM and I was very interested in trying it. He offered to be my guide into the world of kink and be kinky friends with benefits. So I'm all tied up and we're going at it, but with the usual first time together awkwardness, he kept slipping out slash having trouble finding the right spot. I thought it was funny, but he started crying. Turns out he'd had bad experiences a lot growing up, and as a teenager, and women would hurt him if he failed to perform adequately. I guess I was the first person to really listen and comfort him after something like that. That night he cried in my arms for a few hours, told me a lot about his experiences, and then we ended up having a non-kinky, quite sweet time. We've been together since that night for more than a year now. We became close pretty much instantly and he definitely has been an excellent teacher in the world of BDSM. Story 8. My wife and I worked at the same company, but in different departments. A softball teammate of mine actually reported to her, and she was new to our city. I met my teammate and her downtown during St. Patrick's Day. I introduced myself, and she asks me an icebreaker. Would you rather have stilts for legs, or no legs at all? The only answer is stilts for legs, but then went out through the crowd. I get a text message from a random number saying, Hey, asshole, where's my drink? Well, I replied with who the F is this, and met the random number at the indoor bar I was at. It was her. She's drinking straight Jameson with ice in a pint glass. After a few of those, and the generic getting to know you questions, she goes, Damn, I could get into trouble at work. I was confused, and she goes, You're just too cute. During our conversation when she found out I went to college for architecture, she throws out her pickup line. My apartment has really cool architecture, you should come check it out. Minutes later, she spills her entire drink on me and starts licking my ear. We go to her apartment where a few of her co-workers are staying for the night. We begin making out in the bathroom, and eventually her subordinates got weirded out when we moved to the stairs, so they left the apartment. I bend her over the bed. She asks me if I have a condom. I reluctantly say no. That's okay, just put it in the other one. We have an almost one-year-old son now and have been married for three years. She's my best friend and the most down-to-earth woman I've ever known. That has to be one of the most straightforward lines I've ever heard. The inside of my apartment has some really cool architecture. Story 9. It's complicated but entertaining. I grew up with this girl in the neighbourhood. Never saw her in that kind of way. She was always just one of the guys. We were the only ones in the same grade in the neighbourhood, 
so naturally we were close, and I did friend things with her all the time. Friend zone jokes happened, but she was cool, and I wasn't even interested. Anyway, we ended up in the same college. It was a state school, so it's not like Destiny or something like that. We'd also been lifting partners for, at this point, about six or seven years. So we went to the gym, had a normal lift, and went to the respective locker rooms, then the sauna. There had been many times before this that we wingmanned each other, but didn't want to know the gory details. Well, anyway, in walks like six or seven student athletes. Maybe a volleyball team? I don't know. My friend tells one she has a nice ass. I agree. Laughs and jokes abound. Anyway, it devolved into me basically telling them the secrets that magazines don't actually tell you, like what really drives guys crazy, etc., etc. Anyway, one asked for deep-throating tips, and conversations went in that direction. Eventually, I don't know how, but it ended up with them asking if they could practice with me and teach each other. Now, usually here is where my friend would say, my work here is done, peace out. And that's what I was expecting. To my surprise, she stayed in the sauna with us. After all the girls had a turn, they weren't great, but hey, a mouth is a mouth. The winner was, let's call her Amanda, who almost took the whole thing. My friend told them it takes practice and technique. You can't just jump into it, exactly like volleyball or whatever sport they played. And eventually, once you get used to it, you can do this, and proceeds without an additional breath or warm-up to take the whole thing and play around with her tongue. I had no idea what to do. She pulled away, slightly embarrassed, and said, Sorry, didn't mean to get caught up. Hope you don't mind. Everything changed that day, basically. All the years I didn't want to be with her went away. We didn't talk about it, though. We didn't say anything to each other, or anyone else about the sauna competition. Couple of weeks after that, we had a regular workout scheduled. Usually she parked at my place beforehand, and we would drive into the gym together. But this time there was a snowstorm and icy roads, so I told her to crash on the couch instead of driving her super-old, no-snow-tire Civic, home ten miles. Around 2am she came into my room, climbed into my bed. I asked what she was doing. She said, what we should have done way too long ago. Good night. Grabbed my arm and wrapped it around herself. When we woke up she said she was sorry and embarrassed, and that she'll leave ASAP. Well, most of the way through, because I interrupted her by kissing her. Y'all it was like a freaking romantic comedy movie if it wasn't for the prequel that set it all into motion. And if it wasn't for her awakening the emotions... I would have graduated without doing anything, and we would have gone our separate ways. That fateful sauna trip was in 2011, and we are now married. Yeah, this is definitely rom-com-worthy material, although I think they would have to skip over the key part. Story 10. I met my current girlfriend during university. We were in the same social group and she seemed nice enough, very attractive, but probably the kind of girl that was way out of my league. Then one day I went to a quote-unquote massage parlour where they put you in a waiting room and line the girls up in front of you. You can probably guess who was in the lineup. I still remember it very clearly, standing there among the other girls clad in only a skimpy bikini and heels, blushing furiously because we clearly recognised each other. Unfortunately at the time, I was so surprised that I ended up picking somebody else. It was super awkward meeting up in the social circle after that, until I went back to the parlour and picked her the second time around. And now we've been together for around ten years. Story 11. Not my partner, but I was directly involved in two people's rad love story. Me and my friend are pretty close and tend to hook up every now and then. We went out to a bar one night and we were totally drunk out of our minds. He kept talking about how he wanted to bring another guy home with us that night. Since I'm female... I took the reins and let my friend sit back while I flirted with people. I ended up chatting up this one super cute guy, but it later became apparent that the dude I was chatting up was super into another girl at the bar. He ended up taking off. While my friend and I were outside, we joked about how hilarious it would be if we took the girl home instead. We went inside, and she immediately started flirting with me, and telling me I had pretty eyes. We took her home that night and were up till the sun came up. Throughout the night, we had this holy shit did this just happen talk every time she left the room. They ended up hanging out the following day, and have been inseparable ever since. We still laugh, and high-five about it. It seemed very unreal in the moment, 
and is a super great bar story. I'm really hoping they get married one day because I have the go-ahead to tell the story during my toast. Hey there, I hope you're liking this video, and you must be since you've made it this far already. Consider giving it a quick thumbs up. It might not look like it, but these videos take a lot of time and effort to make between curating the best stories for you and long hours editing. Every like helps more people find this content, so thank you. OK, back to the stories now. Story 12. It was my last year in college, and it was the year after my now girlfriend graduated. She would come visit her friends. We were in a bar, and I was standing behind her when I noticed that she dropped her wristlet, wrist wallet, on the ground, and was not aware she dropped it. I tapped her and asked if it was hers, and after confirming it was, she thanked me endlessly. About ten minutes later, she found me and offered to buy me shots for being a nice guy about the situation. Gladly, I accept free alcohol from an attractive female. After the shot, I asked for her number and she gave it to me. I left shortly after that, but later on in the night, around 1 to 1.30, I asked her if she wanted to hang out sometime, and she told me that she wanted me to visit her at her friend's house that night, which I did. We hooked up, and it was awesome. Basically, she would come up every weekend or every other weekend to visit her friends, and always hit me up around 1am for the same old routine. After I graduated, I asked if maybe she actually wanted to get dinner or something. She said yes. After a few dates, I realised my heart wasn't in it all the way and broke things off. Well, I was back at home about a year later and ran into her at, you guessed it, a bar. It was awesome seeing her, and I realised that my feelings were still there for her. Asked her out on another first date, and after a lot of convincing she said yes. We've been dating for close to three years now. Story 13 I was at a bar downtown, it was a mutual friend's birthday party. I was wearing these huge heels and fell down on my way back from the bathroom, after several margaritas, and this random guy helps me up, saying, Don't worry, nobody saw. Fast forward, I ended up taking him home. I also ended up drunk sobbing while we were in the midst of passions because of some other guy I was talking to. I felt bad, so in the morning I bought him a burrito from Jack in the Box, after I had to leave him in my room alone for an hour while I did something at school. I was scared he was a freak who smelled panties or something, but he ended up making my bed really nicely, except for my comforter being upside down. Oh well, I didn't hold it against him. Anyway, I pretty much chalked it up to an awkward one-night stand, and that was that. However, many one-night stands later, with above one-night stand guy, and a couple poopy boyfriends later, over the course of two years, he ends up giving me a very nice personalised Easter basket. And then that was that. We've been together now for three years. Story 14 Met a girl who came out one night with me and some friends. She was cool and we got on well, but I was with someone at the time and didn't see her as anything more. Fast forward a couple of years, and my relationship had flamed out about six months prior. She came forward and just basically said, so we should just do this. We pretty much met once a week for drinks and a hook-up at her place for a couple of months, and then sort of just got it out of our systems. Fast forward another year, I'm still single, she has a serious boyfriend now, but we're still good mates. She has a friend who just broke up with her boyfriend, they were both very unhappy and bored with the relationship, and was moving to our city. So my friend decides that she had a good time with me, and for lack of a better word, recommends me for some no-strings, newly single fun. I met them both at a bar a week later, and we hit it off straight away. Mutual friend left, leaving me and this other girl. I went back to hers that night, Friday. As I'm leaving on Saturday in the late afternoon, she goes... Want to get pizza and wine and watch movies here. We spent the whole weekend together until Monday morning, and the same the next week. We're two and a half years together now, living together, and she's my best friend. Just difficult to explain that I met her because I got a good review from our mutual friend. Sounds like someone should build an app for this. Tinder, but with reviews. But if it blows up, I want 10%. That's it for this video. Let me know in the comments which story you liked the most. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more Reddit stories like this. I hope to see you in the next video.